you should be wrong. All right. Cool. Just want to thank you once again for coming out. Uh, for those of you who may not know, uh, you wrestled under the ring name Tyson Kidd WWE, but a real name TJ Wilson. So, yes, sir. Yep. Very appreciative of you coming out. Hope everything's doing well with you and your loved ones. Um, thank you. Yeah, my pleasure, man. My pleasure. Very busy time of year. Yeah, um, very. Yeah. Uh, just one thing I've some couple of questions I want to ask you is uh, so you started wrestling uh, in 1995 and started training. Yes, sir. Um, around there and i know you were one of the i believe one of the last graduates of the heart dungeon yeah it, uh the last one how how much pride like obviously it's sad that it's no longer going but i mean that it's so really awesome to kind of be the last one to oh yeah really i mean it's through. uh can you still hear me pretty good yeah. okay just double second because i just plugged my phone in <clears throat> um yeah i mean it's a lot of pressure and a lot of uh Obviously, it's something that, uh, I mean, it's very cool. It's almost something I wish, like, didn't, I didn't kind of own that moniker. And just in terms of, like, uh, if the dungeon were still around, how cool it would be. But, um, but I take a lot of pride, a lot of pride and a lot of uh, honor in, in that distinction <clears throat> of, being, of being the last person to graduate from the dungeon when you consider how many great performers of the past yeah, and, and currently um, have, have come out of there. So, I mean, uh, I'm very, very proud of, of my time there. Very proud. Yeah, the whole Hart uh, family. I mean, everybody knows, like, even kids just being born now, like you, Natalia, um, even all the old footage, of course, Jim, uh, mm -hmm. and everybody yeah. else, the British Bulldog. Uh, one thing I was, I, I was doing research on you, but what, is it true that before you wrestled for Stampede or anything that you wrestled for New Japan? Did you do that um, first? I, so I wrestled for Stampede first, okay. and then I did I did wrestle for New Japan in uh, <clears throat> um, 2002 was my first tour. Okay. And how old were you uh, when you did that? And how much? I was uh, 22 when uh, when I did my first. Oops, sorry. When I did my first Don't Japan worry. tour. Uh, Man, it was uh, it was nerve wracking. There was a we had a Japanese. Uh, I'm trying to think, like scout, I guess. He lived in Calgary. He um, little did I know, like what a big, huge impact he'd have on my life. But <clears throat> he he came to wrestle for Stu, I believe, in the in the 70s. And there was a, an accident with the ring truck in which he got his leg amputated. And he ended up living it. He was only supposed to wrestle in Calgary for like two weeks and uh, go back to Japan. He'd been in Montreal for, I believe, a year and a half, Tokyo Joe. And um, yeah, he had this very obviously serious injury where he got his leg amputated and he ended up living the rest of his life in Calgary, which um, was a huge benefit to uh, definitely to me, uh, to me, myself, to Natalia, to um, guys like uh D.H. Smith, Harry Smith, mm -hmm. um, Rick Victor, another guy that trained a lot with him and, and really busted his ass. Rick Victor really busted his ass with Tokyo Joe. So, I mean, so it became a huge benefit to us that, that um, you know, this horrible accident, you know, decades before took place. And well, we kind of got to reap some of the rewards out of it and in terms of like, training with this Tokyo Joe and he really showed us a lot on not only how to survive <clears throat> in wrestling, but really in life and, and just kind of made us real strong for, uh, for the world, really, not just, not just the wrestling world, but just for the world in general. And uh, so that's, you know, uh, he had a good relationship with um, Ross Hart and Ross Hart brought him to the dungeon. And then that kind of became um, my link my link to going to new Japan uh, at that time. So, yeah, I mean, I remember flying there and just being so scared and like, just, I didn't know what to expect. I thought I was going over there to have like, uh, I had, I think we did 13 shows on that first tour in uh, three weeks, but just under three weeks, like 19 days or 20 days. Um, 
I remember thinking I was going over there to have uh, 13 like real fights. I, I didn't know what, I didn't know what to expect, man. I, we trained, we trained hard. We trained almost like uh, it was 2002. So it was a little bit early for like what the MMA game is now, mm-hmm. but we were doing a lot of like MMA style training for, for pro wrestling at that time. Uh, so, I mean, I, I like the good thing is I went over to, to Japan um, over prepared, which I, I'll take that every day over being underprepared so i was i was really prepared but i mean man we trained hard and i was thinking i was going over there to fight so uh found out that we weren't we were just we were gonna wrestle and it was a lot of fun man it was such a great time in my life but it's uh interesting for you talking about the technical stuff but i'm the heart family dungeon also focused a lot on that but i've also heard stories that it was also fairly disciplined uh style of teaching and I'm new. I've heard the same thing about New Japan pro wrestling too, especially with young guys, in terms of uh, just the kind of responsibilities they do, like a lot of cleaning and things. Yeah, like that. yeah, those young boy duties that those guys. It's funny because I was at, I was just talking um, about this in the locker room the other day. But I've, I've run the gamut. Uh, well, not quite. Give me a few more years, and I'll, I'll run the full gamut. But I've been, I've been like. Uh, I've been like the youngest guy in the locker room. Then I've been like one of the youngest guys and middle. And now I'm like, in the, I'm not, I'm not one of the, I'm not the oldest, but now I'm in, in that realm of it a little bit. Uh, so it just is funny. Like I've experienced, experienced I've experienced everything when it, yeah. when it comes to like um, growing up and stuff in, in, in wrestling, I've experienced it all. So uh, the funny thing is when I was over in Japan, I, I technically was like, I was like a one or two years younger than the young boys at that point. So I'm like, uh, I think TJ Perkins and Daniel Bryan were on the tour before me. And uh, they're both, they're both younger than me. Um, Dan Bryan by like a year, TJ, I don't know, but maybe like three years or something, but I, you know, so they were on the tour before me. Then I went and I, I like, like I said, it was crazy because I was younger than the young boys, but I don't have to do the young boy like duties. And I'm like kind of watching them like, oh, I'm sorry, kind of no watching worries. them have to do like, uh, you know, just all this extra training. And, and I, I mean, I was doing a ton of training at home, uh, but just like, uh, just like the extra work that those young guys, I mean, it's cool. It's a cool system they have and it really breeds, um, it breeds a lot of respect and in discipline the, in wrestling. Man. Yeah, and oh yeah, tons of discipline. Yeah, those I, guys are disciplined, man. I've heard the stories. Um, I don't want to say his name. I don't want to be disrespectful, but of American pro wrestlers being sent home because of like a slip up. Like someone took a picture in a freezer laying down on food, and they've had maybe some other disciplinary issues. And I've heard that companies will just send people right home if they feel like you don't respect yeah or, i mean I, I, yeah uh i don't i don't know i don't know that story but uh, like, uh i mean yeah it definitely yeah. happens yeah it definitely happens it's uh, but it's just that it's funny it's one the technical style too that you always speak of uh dh smith i know also does uh mma i guess he went back to do kind of like a blend of like mma and boxing and like i know in new japan and really change up his style and I believe yeah. he did some shoot fights too. So he's did, done uh, some. Uh, he's done some. Uh, uh, what is it? Uh, Naga Naga tournaments. Okay. And he's he's won a couple. He's won a couple of those. Yeah. I mean, he's a he's a he's a insane um, like submission wrestler. Yeah. He he is crazy. He like uh, he just picks his stuff up so fast and then kind of tries to show me and just hurts. <laughs> I don't want to know it. I don't <laughs> want to know it, Harry. Don't, you don't got to demo it on me. Go demo it on someone else. I'll just watch. What was it kind of working like him? Because you you just mentioned that he's you're all just really good technically, but it seems like when you guys were booked in the WWE, that they kind of as a tag team, it always has to be power and like a small like if it's a smaller guy in a bigger, it always has to be power and that. So he, it seems like he didn't really get a chance to show off just kind of how smooth it was because. Because yeah, like I've seen yeah, he had a few there were a few there were a few like moments where he did get a show that mm-hmm. um it, I mean yeah just in terms of like the psychology of us as a tag team and just my size and uh and his size it just made sense that I would do a lot more of the 
quick pace stuff. And then he's kind of the power guy. So you didn't get to always show a lot of how smooth he truly, truly is or all of his, um, but I mean, honestly, a lot of his technical prowess, but uh, there were, there were some, there were some times like, um, like matches with the dude busters or like later on when we're not a team, I'm Trim Beretta yeah. and, uh, Kalen Croft. Yeah. Think, yeah. And we had, we had a couple singles matches against each other. Um, we did a bunch of live events against each other, but we did like, uh, one was in MSG, but we did like, uh, it was on superstars. It was in Philadelphia yeah. and it was, it was a lot of fun that match. I thought, you got to show a lot of like a lot of fire and a lot of, a lot of really good things that I know that um, I know that he, he can, he can pull out on a, on a nightly basis. So it was cool. It was cool to have those moments. Like for me, I haven't, I've been retired for almost six years and like, and this match is like 11, we had it 11 years ago, but like I think of our match that I had with him at MSG all the time. It was very cool in my mind for us that I know it was a live event the day after Christmas in a blizzard, but it was very cool to wrestle at Madison square garden, the most famous arena in the world to have a singles match against Harry in the same, not obviously the same um, atmosphere, but in the same, in the same arena that like Brett Nolan opened up WrestleMania 10 in a singles match. So, uh, you know, and so things like that are kind of the things that I relate to and the things that, like really stand out for me but I remember being very very proud of not only myself but very very proud of, of Harry in that like in for example in that match at Madison Square Garden I remember uh John Laurinaitis pulling us aside after and just talking like you just said it was like it was really really good and he had a lot of complimentary things to say and it was just it was a great feeling yeah I know how good you are <laughs> I doubt you can actually see it, but that poster up there, I live in Plant City, Florida. So okay. I used yep. to go to the FCW shows when I was a kid. And I, you're on you're on that. Mm. But that's where I saw Seamus and Drew and everyone. So I do remember as a kid, I knew like how talented everyone was when they were coming up. That's so funny, man. I, I know, I know yeah. Plant City. I know the we, we wrestle at the school, right? And it's like the got the armory. Plant City yeah, Armory, the lock, yeah. but the locker room has like actual like lockers. It feels like a like a school. I'm pretty sure uh, that's you could have wrestled in multiple. We have a we have a few uh, places that you could, but you, I know you did wrestle the Armory. Oh and, man, you know what? I'm thinking of maybe like Brooksville. The, there was a little period where we were like we were doing those random FCW shows. Yeah, Funny. it's a just deep south wrestling ohio valley wrestling and now just fcw I did was, you ever go to uh the fcw arena or no uh no i didn't i was too young yeah kind of I, the, the furthest i could get my family to drive out to a show was uh i was very fortunate to smack down my first show was in 2007 uh when i was in third grade in orlando and, uh no in tampa actually the st oh. pete times forum or the it's the amelie arena now yeah yeah but, yeah but that was uh my first show and then i was very fortunate that you guys it just lucked out the period of time i got into wrestling was right when deep south wrestling they ended their partnership and opened Gosh, up yeah. fcw so it was just i i have like autographs from you guys and dude uh, it's wild to think about like that was <laughs> like i moved to fcw I've lived in Tampa, uh, in, in Florida for almost 14 years now. It's crazy that it was that long ago. Like FCW, I've been on, I debuted on the main roster in February 09, 12 years ago. It's just crazy. Just so fun. It's, um, yeah. It's how, how do you like it here uh, compared to Canada? And I love it. Uh, I love the sun, man. I love, uh, I love the warm. I love the heat. Even when it gets like real hot and it's crazy humid right after it rains, I try not to complain too much because the trade-off in uh, December, January, February is yeah. is unbelievable. So I'll take it. I'll take I'll take that humid, that sticky humidity, and on the on uh, you know hurricane season, I'll take that all year long. It's a, another thing too. It's something you don't notice, but over time you adapt to it. Because I've grown yep. up here my whole life, and I used to go on road trips during the summer. And I went to Milwaukee. Uh, we went to Milwaukee one summer. It was their hottest day on record. It was like a hundred degrees. Everyone's complaining, but the humidity is like twenty percent. So we're just oh, yeah. in there, all fine, like in jeans, and everyone, all the Milwaukee's are, oh, just yawning. It's 
I, it's so funny. It's it, kind of like LA too. LA is like doesn't have that same humidity that Florida has. Like LA gets hot, but it's not. It's not. It's not it's that just humidity. Dry. Like <laughs> yeah. It's a, so it's easy. Like LA is easy. I love LA. It's easy. Like the yeah. weather is possible. You got a water shortage problem. Humidity is probably not going to be too yeah, big yeah, of an yeah. issue. Like, yes. Um, you mentioned the the wrestling at MSG and the same place where Owen and Brett opened up. Uh, what are some other uh, big WrestleMania moments you have that may not necessarily uh, include you, but just kind of things that you've seen over the years because you've been involved with and then yeah. for so long. I mean, um, I was there live for WrestleMania 12. Owen flew me down as a, as a guest of his. Uh, so I was there for uh, Brett and Sean's Iron Man match, which like blew me away live. Um, I'm trying to think. Oh, there's so many. <laughs> yeah, I mean, there's, really, there's so many. Like I've been at, I've been at like almost every WrestleMania since 24. So I mean, like I, the I, job. <laughs> I, I've been, I, I was at 12. I was at 22 and then every other one since 24, basically. So like, it just, I mean, there's a lot of uh, Sean and Undertaker, that first one in Houston. Mm-hmm. I mean, I like both, but that first one in Houston is unbelievable. Um, that, that one was, I, that was the only WrestleMania I ever watched the, the day of just cause I never had cable or anything until gotcha. that period of yeah, time. Yeah, yeah. So a buddy, that was the first time someone did it. My favorite wrestler is Rey Mysterio. He won the okay. title for in like 21 seconds. Oh, that yeah, match JBL, was on right. the card. As uh, it was, I don't blame you. A lot of people say that, and it's the one of those matches where people don't roll their eyes when someone says it because everyone just acknowledges just how like incredible it really is. And, yeah, man, match uh, is unbelievable. How much does the whole experience of kind of WrestleMania mean to you? especially being around for so long, does it ever get old just like every year? Is it, you know what, you know, what's so funny. I was just thinking this yesterday when we were at SmackDown and I was like, okay, so this, there's one more week. And then like this next week is all the week before WrestleMania, like this tier now. And even last year's WrestleMania was exciting with just how different the world was. And just, we're going to do the first ever WrestleMania with no fans. Like it just, it's crazy, yeah. but it, but it still was really exciting. And, um, uh, so like, it, that's a funny question because every single time, it, like once you kind of see it, like it starts like, uh, I don't know, say like October, November, once like, you know, like maybe you're in December one, then all of a sudden once January, it's like, okay, wrestling, mm-hmm. you know, Royal Rumble's coming up, but WrestleMania is a, it's still a little, a little bit away, but it's around the corner. And then, um, man, every single time it's the same thing. It's it for some weird reason. Uh, not for some weird reason. It's, it's a great thing. But like it's always like that week before, that's two weeks before it gets really, really exciting. And it gets uh, it doesn't get old and it doesn't lose that luster for some reason. It just like keeps like I was around all the talent yesterday and everybody's like super excited for this next week and and especially for saturday and sunday to you know there's this is gonna be the first time um in over a year for for our talent to perform in front of fans is and a lot of them and it's gonna be it's gonna be unbelievable unbelievable experience that like no one like all the people involved on on the show on saturday and sunday on the on both days they're there it's this is gonna be like one of those ones that they never forget Right. Yeah. It's right in my backyard, Raymond James. So I've already, oh, yeah. there's a lot of people that are really, like, really excited. Mm-hmm. It's, it's building up a enthusiasm. It's kind of, especially with the vaccine rollout, it's yeah, everyone's yeah, yeah. feeling pretty high and kind of cruising. So it's, it's kind of good to see a little, little bit of joy here. Mm-hmm. Uh, you, you mentioned it's been over a year since uh, there's been fans in the stand. So how has the talent, and kind of even the producers and people backstage, how they like coped with the mental effects of that. And um, I mean, it, cause it's a big difference, you know, just not having the crowd huge. to react with. Yeah. Huge. I mean, that's, that's like what we do. So it's just very different. Um, but uh, I think we have the best talent in the world 
and they step right up and like I remember I can remember I, I mean I have a great memory but I remember Thursday the Thursday when things were like shutting down and I remember Johnny calling me and asking me if I'd already flown to Detroit because that's where Smackdown was supposed to be and I said nope not, uh my I booked a later flight my flight's like late tonight and he said okay uh don't get on that flight because uh it's closing down and tomorrow at SmackDown will probably be at the performance center with no fans. I'm like, okay, no problem. I mean, no problem. And so we show up and, you know, it was a little bit obviously real odd that first day and those first few weeks was, uh, you know, just, uh, you know, I don't know about like growing pains, but a little bit and trying to, yeah, it was growing pains and trying to figure out what's the best angles on everything and what's the best like camera angles like where do we want the like the performance center is not obviously what where the main roster is used to performing so it, be, it was a very 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 big difference and uh, you know what the crazy thing is it didn't like it took on the production side of things it took us a while to kind of like really iron things out which i think is completely natural but on the talent side of things no problem they they took to it like ducks the water right off the bat everything was everyone was good and um i mean over the last year i think there have been some really 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 awesome matches and i oh yeah i've like there's been so many that i loved and i just am like it's weird i don't know do i love them more because of the effort with no fans in the stand or would they even be that much better with an audience reacting. I don't know. Like, it's just like, it's one of those, like, we don't, it's those what ifs we don't, we will never know. So it's just interesting, like, uh, those types of things. Even like, there have been some really good matches because even the WrestleMania, they split it, split it up for like three nights for the first time or two nights for, for the first time last year. Yep. And that Brock and Drew match, like every, there is tons of positive feedback just from that. Yeah. And uh, if there was a crowd there, it's, it would have been oh, man. on fire. They were, they, but yeah, you just, I mean, all you have to do is go back and look at that that reaction at uh, Royal Rumble. Yeah. When and, Drew eliminated Brock. So imagine that at WrestleMania. Yeah. And uh, uh, speaking of that, too, just how I don't even know if it's lucky, but everything started to close down right after the roll out, roll out of the Royal Rumble. So it's <sighs> at least everyone got that i couldn't imagine edge coming back to that and yeah man it just you know, being you probably could have heard the talent screaming from the locker room anyways but I yeah mean, no you're right is like obviously it wasn't ideal but at least like edge got to come out at rumble first yeah and have that moment in front of a baseball stadium of fans not even an arena a baseball stadium in houston uh, yeah it's especially just all the talent too um it's and it was a good event so hopefully it was able to kind of hold it over for a bit but you know it's yeah it's tough. definitely definitely but i mean everyone's done the best and yeah. it doesn't like it's not like to me it's not like it shows in anyone's performance that that there aren't fans they the, the talent's not performing like that right well so that's what, a win you have a lot of uh, indie wrestlers who started from grassroots, so I'm for some people may not be yeah. the <laughs> have to adapt, but oh, yeah. it's <laughs> I wrestled in front of four people, so that's you know ZZ Top's first concert only had one fan, so wow, it was, I didn't yeah, know that. yeah. I mean, it's so everyone uh, starts somewhere, yeah, and they don't know 1 the name million of the percent. fan either, so that's it's another tidbit, um, yeah, man. Another question about WrestleMania is what are some fa your personal favorite moments? Obviously you were uh, wrestled for Cesaro and you've also done the, the battle Royales a couple of times, but yeah, you also debuted at mania doing the heart attack to help Brett. And you did the heart attack to Mr. McMahon, I believe to the yes. outside floor. So I was yeah. also wondering if you put a little bit of extra on that I one. I bounced his head like a basketball. If anyone can go watch it back and see, I bounced Vince's head like a basketball. That's on tape. That's that's on pay per view. That's that's out there for the world. They can have that one. This is for Brett. Uh, yeah, it was, uh, <laughs> that was awesome, man. That was very uh, obviously, yeah. I mean, those those are the two. 
really uh the, the 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 deal with brett and vince was awesome and was like very cool thing to be a part of and you know it's, it becomes one of those where it's all just timing like if brett had done that deal you know 10 years earlier or something i'm not involved but 10 years later in 2010 i i am involved so it's so i mean it worked out cool for us obviously um and then yeah wrestlemania in san francisco a, it was cool as a brand new brand new building was very cool and then secondly uh to be out there with cesaro and and do that four-way tag and have the crowd react the way they did it just it was a lot of fun it was a great group of dudes and just like uh I, and we did double duty we ran back i remember running because it's a stadium i remember running all like going through the side then running all the way around to get back to gorilla to and literally like just barely making it in time and then going out for the battle road i i always hear those stories too. everything's just so big now it's people at, at mania it's it just reminds you of i don't know if you've seen this is spinal tap where they're just they're going on stage for a gig and they just keep turning on down different hallways and different corridors and they end up being so late that the show's over i didn't like, that that's funny that i mean i'm surprised i'm surprised i haven't it's, done that it's, not everyone gets a golf cart i guess so it's kind yeah, of yeah I've, I've yet to use those golf carts <laughs> all the rest of have been to i use my use my damn feet yeah but you're a big cardio guy so that's even with my torn, even when, when I went uh, WrestleMania in New York, twenty nine, I had a, I had knee surgery a little before, but I didn't use those stinking carts. Don't need them. No canes, no crutches. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> um. So, you, as you said, you've been for with the WWE for a while, and throughout that time, uh, or not even just WWE, throughout many corporations. Uh, what are some big differences between since you started and to now in terms of the improvement of like medical care and oh. uh, medical treatment provided to people um what are some things that really stand out because famously uh D chris jericho was one of the people that helped WWE or encouraged i guess wwe to have a doctor at every show because they didn't yeah. have one for a while i don't know if it was just him or a growing effort but yeah 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 probably yeah i'm not i'm not sure where like that obviously before my time i don't know where that yeah. credit like fully goes to uh chris invents everything now. <laughs> yeah <laughs> you know that uh he's a good friend of mine um, uh, I, I think he's the best he was really nice to me when i met him years ago back so nothing yeah, but oh, great things always, to say. Always, always is a great guy um yeah, yeah i mean the, so i think before maybe it was it was be kind of like a i think it'd be kind of like an outsourced doctor i might be wrong about mm -hmm. that and and then now it's like our own and like we have you know uh, almost like brand specific and then they were we, yeah we have doctors at every show um with like for example like the drug test you used to they used to drug test you when you first get signed and if you fail that you were allowed to like fail that first one it would be counted as your baseline and then level like if whatever you fail for it couldn't be in there obviously in the follow-up test okay. and things like that um and it's changed now it's changed to you have to pass clean the first one or your contract doesn't get executed which is a that's a giant change right. and and a, and in the right direction um yeah i mean i think the medicals the medical as uh, like the med the medical stepped up quite a bit i think it's been with with my injuries um but two, my neck and my knee. Mm -hmm. um, company took care of absolutely everything. Uh, like I, I've had, I've had luckily the best surgeons in the world work on me, and that's through WWE. So I think you know, obviously, I wouldn't have I wouldn't have hurt my knee if I wasn't wrestling that day in Green Bay, Wisconsin, but you know for wwe but it would, like they didn't hurt my knee i heard right. i just was a, it just was a thing but they took care of every single aspect of my knee um and then you know same with my neck with my neck i was not i was obviously wasn't out of the company i was in the, i was under contract the entire time i just was at home but i was i was home for almost two years and 
Uh, they made sure I had a great surgeon. Um, I had to get airlifted out of Texas. Like they, they, had, they covered a lot of things, man. And, uh, and uh, I, I can't, I can't, I can't say enough uh, good things about the medical in terms of uh, just even personally what I, like what I've experienced with them. Yeah. It's just, it's really good. Cause you, you hear a lot of the, the different horror stories. Like a guy will take a chair shot and, or something that take a sledgehammer or stick and just a fluke and you hit an artery or something and, trying to after a show trying to run and find somebody can't find an open yeah 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 like now yeah exactly they're yep. like sabu taping up tearing his like high seven but, taping it up it's like the bicep it's like, yeah that that's gnarly wire. but also not healthy like, <laughs> I don't, nuts with that yeah he loves that man I, I, he's, I, like every time since he done that he just loves tape he thinks tape heals everything <laughs> it's yeah, I, if you have enough heart, enough commitment, I suppose. But that's also why I didn't become a wrestler. Decided uh, the writing part might be a little bit better. You know, you you can usually tell around seven or eight if you think you're gonna have the athleticism, and that's a uh, not everyone's got it. So, but you know, people enjoy watching it. Uh, yeah, and and there's and there's nothing wrong with that. It's like no. I'm a I'm like the world's not, I mean, not, well, not the world's biggest, but I'm like a giant UFC fan. I'm a giant NBA fan, a basketball fan. Like, guess what? I don't plan on doing either of those. <laughs> yeah. So it's all good. Exactly. It's fun to watch people who know what they're doing. <laughs> That's Yeah, there's nothing nothing wrong with watching people that are great nope. at what they do. It doesn't mean I have to also do it. Right, exactly. Um, so you've been, obviously, you've wrestled for so long. How did you keep a positive mind state of mind while on the road because it, it, obviously it's a lot of wear and tear I mean, sure and so what are some things you kind of did to keep yourself fresh and to not burn out because it can company could take a lot from a lot of people so yeah the, like the schedule is just a little it just is like a, it's kind of interesting i've explained this to people um the industry but, rather sorry not just the company i'm sorry to- no, no, it's all good. Uh, but like uh, WrestleMania, for example, it's a Super Bowl of what we do. And then, like, I mean, obviously, you know, Tampa won the Super Bowl this year. Yeah, it was a very good year for us. Yes. And they didn't play a regular season game the very next day. They've been off since. Yeah. That's, and that's cool. And in our world, we do the Super Bowl. And this year, we do two Super Bowls. And then we do Raw the very next day. And, and then that's usually another Super Bowl in its own right, because yeah, and raunches. then we, and then in a normal situation, then the next week after we're going, usually we're going to Europe for two weeks. So, oh. like the schedule doesn't stop. The schedule does not stop, and so, um, uh, so in terms of like staying fresh and stuff on the road and keeping your mind right, um definitely like now with like technology like phones i mean now sitting at a dmv isn't the all time it still sucks but it's not the all time where it's yeah. you can at least entertain yourself for those two hours you got to wait for your number to be called um don't have to read the same think. poster over and over again yeah exactly oh, I can't like reading all the exact same oh. words <laughs> over and over again uh, yeah they uh and also the truth is, and I know it's gonna sound like so cheesy, like, but I loved wrestling so much. I mean, I well, not loved, I take it back. I love wrestling so much that um I don't I didn't I never like burned up like that. And even like yeah. physically, I never was like too too beat up. I'd you know, I'd be a little bit sore once in a while, but I always took very, very good care of my body. I always made sure to work out every day. I on the road, especially. I think it's I think it's a secret. I don't think it's, it's a, I don't know, it's not a well-kept secret, uh, but it, it's all, you, I think it's the key, man. I, for me, for me, it's the key to like everything I've done. Yeah. It's I've, I, everyone has their own thing. Uh, and if whatever helps you and whatever you're passionate yeah. about, it's just finding it. Like it, yes, whether sir. it's music, it's just, yes, you know, exactly. You're lucky yep. enough to be successful with it too. It's just oh, even man. better. Yeah. Uh, and so like, that was the part, like, 
I know it sounds so cheesy, but like I'd be on the road and sure I'd be tired. I'd be beat up. I'd, I'd be just as tired if I was at home. I, there, there were a lot of times where I slept better on the road. Cause I just would be so exhausted that I would sleep better on the road than at home. But just like, I knew this was my dream since I was 10 years old, 12 years old, really. And so I knew that like, in the exact same way that I don't complain about the Florida heat because the humidity, yeah, because the trade off for how for the winter. Same thing. I like tried my. I obviously yeah, we all complain, but I would try my best not to and just sort of like not lose sight of like twelve year old me who's like I'm living out twelve year old me's dream. So I can't be too feel too sorry for myself being tired in Poughkeepsie, New York, because it could be a lot worse. Right. And yeah, it's, it's a, I think, a very good perspective to have is, and be fortunate just not to have to deal with those kind of things. Um, but you mentioned- it's not, your, it's not easy. It's much easier said than done. Just a matter of, I mm-hmm. guess, trick, tricking yourself right. mentally. Yeah. It's, but, you, you know, it's just some people are different. If For you're sure. lucky enough, you just have that passion and just doesn't go out and yep yeah and, uh, man and i've seen it i've seen people um get their uh get their passion i guess extinguished and it's kind of yeah. like i've seen it too many times mm-hmm. and you know not i'm and i mean uh, on all on all levels whether it's whether it's in wwe or if it's guys back home that um you know, maybe reach a certain point where they didn't think they had, they were going to make it. And so they kind of, and it just is, it just is disheartening to see. I've seen that passion, like I said, extinguished a lot in people. And I mean, obviously we, we see it a bunch. It's not just only in wrestling. You see it all the time across all platforms, but it just, you know, it was, so it was something I was cognitive of, cognitive of and definitely didn't want to fall down that, that hole. Right. It's, yeah, and just very unfortunate, but, you know, it's, uh, that's just, I, as they say, as is life, it's just yes, sir. Deal, dealing with the hands you're dealt the best you can and finding people love and support. How much did, for example, how much did having Natalie and kind of Dave around? And I was going to say that, that, so that alone and, is like what allows me to be on the road and not feel like the road them because obviously with you know having them there that's my family like Mm -hmm. i've been around since i was 10 years old so like yeah so i mean definitely that is like the giant force and what in what helps like being on the road especially at that like when i'm first on the road is really what helps like that like combat that loneliness where it doesn't exist so like being on the road or being at home like i would be in the car with natty it's not really a giant difference right i also so we're driving through the sun we're driving through some snow <laughs> i also had a question about uh being uh, now married with a natty what was it like to have to become a cat person uh, it's funny i've always i've always been a yeah cat person. Uh, when i was younger my sisters were allergic so i couldn't have cats oh, and they like, terrible outgrew, they outgrew that so and i i've had cats like my whole life since oh. i was like 10 or 11 that's yeah. great. I I used to have four when I was younger. It's just, you know, they're just smaller and they're more also more independent and you yep. don't have to give them baths. Like it's just a, it's for me, it's a huge one when, and you give them a litter box and like, it's just, it's, yeah, they give themselves it's perfect baths for me. Self-cleaning. Like, I, I, yeah, exactly. I, I, it's just such a, they're so low maintenance. I don't understand how I guess man's best friend, but I mean, I, not that I don't like dogs. They're all great, but you know, it's, yeah, I'm, I'm definitely gotta a have a preference. Definitely a cat person. You mentioned the kind of uh, keep keeping fresh on the uh, road early when you're talking about it and keeping like your kind of your uh, body in good shape too. What, yes, what, are kind of, what are kind of some uh, things that you did that really just like, helped you like stay fresh because obviously it's a really grueling schedule and you've seen what can happen for example like with dynamite kid and other uh sure kamala and um, later on as well yeah yeah, uh, yeah. Leg, they, leg. 
they all like have their it all the like, chips away so or did you is that something you always kind of tried to keep in mind and for the long term or were you just kind of more yeah, in the moment? I think so and I I always I always focused on like I said I I just believe like especially if I'm waking up on a Friday morning and if I go to bed at like I don't know two and I wake up at like four to go to the airport and I sleep a little bit on the plane and then I get to you know wherever like the live event is that day like if it's like in phoenix arizona and i flew all day first thing i do when i land obviously grab a rental car and i go to a gym i go grab a water a gallon of water and a gym and i work out and i try to drink that full gallon and get like my body kind of reset and get my blood moving and um so that's always kind of been the secret for me uh, that i found that like no matter how tired I was, as long as like, once I landed, obviously you're just going to feel tired. You just sat on a plane for six hours or two hours or, you know, however long, and you're just going to feel sluggish and tired. So you can either just feel sluggish and tired all day, or you can go to the gym and kind of kick it out. And then, um, for, and so that's what worked for me. I'd go to the gym, I'd kick it out and, uh, I'd feel great. I'd feel great. I'd, I'd be tired that night, uh, you know, driving, but, uh, in terms of getting the match done and like feeling good and, and feeling like refreshed, I, that for me, that's, that's been the key. Um, yeah. And especially wrestling so long too, I assume your cardio is just absolutely insane. Yeah. From I, I, such had, a young I had age. great cardio in the ring. Yeah. Um, that obviously just has, has to play its role. Uh, what are some of the your favorite people that you have wrestled in the ring? Like, I know you wrestled with, uh, as you said, D.H. Smith and uh, Cesaro, but I was also a really, really big fan of your work when you went uh, back down to NXT and you were working with uh, Adrian Neville. And uh, Yeah, that was a lot of fun. That yeah. NXT run was a lot of fun. It was it, so much fun. It was kind of just like a really good push. And even though they kept talking about how it was going to be uh, – just all this new talent and but i thought bringing you back kind of really helped just show how talented everyone was and just kind of really gave them a sense of legitimacy yes yeah, it helped it helped give me a little bit of a or i mean maybe maybe not even a little bit but a, a lot of a lot of a spotlight at that time that really helped me a lot um hunter really helped me and believed in me at that time and really um was really helping me out uh, Dusty Rhodes, obviously, a lot at that time, mm -hmm. really, really helped me out. Um, I don't even remember how exact. Like, I do remember how it happened. I reached out to one of the one of the people in charge of NXT, one of the writers, and just said that I was gonna stop by the show the next day, and if he could, if he wanted to use me, he could use me, and mm -hmm. if not, it's cool. And um, I came by, and I wrestled Mason Ryan that day, and and. Um, and then uh, I, be, I beat Mason Ryan. And then all of a sudden, and I have a promo on the ramp uh, post-match. And then all of a sudden, I go to the next, I go to the next taping. And then that's when, like, uh, we started getting ready for that first takeover. I think, mm -hmm. I think the first one initially was maybe going to be sometime in July. And then maybe with, like, the network numbers and stuff, they moved it to May. Because I think the original plan that's, that I was told was eventually I was going to wrestle Sammy on the first takeover. Okay. We we're supposed to, I think, become a tag team and kind of like a little bit like Brett and Owen maybe. And then finally I turn on him. And then I think we we're supposed to wrestle at that first takeover. But that's when it was supposed to be like in July, maybe end of July. Then it got moved to the end of May. And so I did that Mason Ryan match. Uh, and they would tape every three or four weeks at that time, four weeks. And then I show up at the next taping, which is after WrestleMania 30. I did the Andre Battle Royal. I remember, and I was talking to the writer there, and that's when he explained to me um, the Sammy, like the tag team stuff. And I was like, "Yo, this is this is awesome, man!" And then uh, that was on that was literally like I think on the Monday or Tuesday of WrestleMania that week, like after WrestleMania 30. And then I show up at the next NXT taping, which 
maybe we taped enough in advance that it wasn't the same week as WrestleMania. Like maybe it was the following. And um, I show up and I see that same writer. He's like, yo, things change. He's like, it's you and, it's you and Neville at, at TakeOver. And then, you know, so, so it, it, it took on a, a different thing. It was awesome. I loved it. I love wrestling uh, Neville. I think he's insanely talented and one of my favorite guys I got to wrestle. Uh, but in terms of like, my favorite guys, I mean, like, there are so many. Trent right. uh Kurt Hawkins. These are also some of my best friends. But um, mm-hmm. Rey Mysterio, uh, obviously. Of course. Uh, yeah. re- re- like, revolutionary. Um, I'm happy. I was proud that I got it. Also at MSG, I got to team up with Brett. Um, we did Is a that six-man house tag. Show? Yeah, we did a six-man tag. Brett Hart Appreciation Night versus Nexus there. Oh, that's uh, pretty awesome. Teamed up with Brett a few times uh, on a European tour as well, which is really cool. Obviously, never wrestled against Brett, um, but team of them was awesome. Yeah. Uh, wrestled DX, which was really really awesome, and just obviously, you know, with uh, that Calgary connection, it just it may, means that much more to to kind of be in there with those guys. Um, I'm trying. To, I don't like uh, New Day. Yeah, Usos, oh. like the Usos. Oh man, when the Usos got called up, I was so excited because now I had a tag team that I could really like, I could really play with. And, and they, they, they're they're great. They've been great from the beginning, man. And like that, they're, they're so awesome. Those two. Didn't you all feud like almost right off the bat? Yeah, like yeah. when they debut, they debut mm-hmm. and attack us. And so then we start wrestling yeah, with the right triple away. splash, right? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, and we start wrestling right away on live events. Uh, we we end up wrestling them. Um, I think that was like around May. Eight, or, yeah, I think that's May. And then we wrestled them like all on live events, like every week, all May, June, July, August, uh, all the way even into September. It was so much fun. Uh, once in a while, we'd, we'd wrestle some SmackDown loops against like Gallows and Mercury, and then a couple against like Hawkins and Archer. At that time, when we were tag team champions, but we wrestled a lot with the Usos during that whole summer, and it just was like I'd just be driving from town to town, coming up with as many ideas as I could. And I'd show up the next day, I would tell them, they would of course be able, I'd be able to execute it with them. Then I'd drive in that night, try to come up with new ideas. It was fun. It was so much fun. It was so. It was. Uh, I bet if I were to watch my actual like TV matches at that time, I would see a lot of growth based off the matches I was having with the Usos on, on um, the live events at that time. It, it's very uh, interesting. You're talking about the, obviously the Usos just coming back up, but I, I remember that period of time where not the, that they weren't talented, but it seemed like there weren't a lot of whole like valid or like legitimate tag teams on the scene mm-hmm. at that time. Like, yeah, they, I think I kind of feel like we go through waves of that. I feel yeah. like WWE, Ever since I've been a kid, I've noticed it goes through waves where there's maybe four tag teams and there's all of a sudden 12. And, mm-hmm. and, I'm, and of the four, none are really that great. And then all of a sudden of the 12, eight of them are like great tag teams. So like it goes through its periods, like exactly like at that time, it's kind of vision wasn't super strong. And uh, so like then, like then it becomes a goal within like the tag team guys of like, yo, let's make this thing strong let's do our best. Like, and, and of course that's always the plan. And, and then like, then you fast forward. And then like my time with Cesaro, I thought we had yeah. like, some great tag teams. It was, you all kind of really helped to rejuvenate it a bit for sure. Cause I, even as I remember it was some pretty dark years cause it was, it was fairly hot. I remember from like 2007 to two, like, yeah, around 2007. Cause the Hardy boys and, like mm-hmm. Mercury Nitro Molina yep, yep. and the Kendrick in London. There were a lot of still like really good, uh, talented people. And then just even a couple of years later, things move on, like creative things. And thankfully they had some really good technical guys that, and some really good workers and you, the Hart dynasty and then the Usos uh, came and then eventually. And then what's funny is then a got like, for example, a team like, uh, like Jericho and Big Show. Like they, yeah, they yeah. ended up becoming yeah. like a good tag. Team. Yeah. Like it's, when it, obviously the first time you see it, it's kind of weird. And we like it, it is what it is. It's two singles guys. And then 
you fast forward like three months and they're like, they're a pretty good tag team. Oh yeah. It's a, uh, it, they, they remind me of the SmackDown tag tournament they had in like O2 where they just randomly clumped people together. And it was like a uh, edge and Rey Mysterio, I think, versus uh, the angle was in there, but they yep. just really put together just a lot of, yeah, Jim uh, Ray was that was an interesting tag team. They did some cool, cool yeah. stuff, and like they they have like they might well obviously there's been others with like say for like example Big Show and Spike Dudley, but Edge and Ray are up there for in terms of like tag teams having the craziest like height difference. Yeah, it's, that, that one's up there. It it was an example too. We were just talking earlier how they made Edge kind of look more like the bigger, strong guy because. Yeah, I mean, even though he's tall, people will never like think of him as like, oh, he's just a a freakishly up. strong. Yeah. yeah. But then you see him just casually throwing Ray around because yeah, it turned all wrestlers turn out kind of strong. So I was like, <laughs> exactly. Who would have thought the people who work out for a living and do physical activities yeah, might strong. have a little bit of core strength? Exactly. But like, it's just one of those things you never know until you put talents together how well they'll work together how well they're they'll gel they, no, i mean with, yes no doubt. you and exactly. cesaro being a perfect example as well like oh my god like yeah i told i told this story but it was like uh i saw a twitter graphic that like that we were teaming up oh <laughs> like, there was a tag gauntlet and it just like it just had like a, i saw the usos together i saw a new day in the picture i saw gold dust and stardust i saw oh the yeah was ascension i think ascension might have been in that and then i see Luke. like i see in cesaro's face and i was like well i guess well we're obviously a team in this thing because <laughs> i mean obviously but anyway then like then the question like after that day was like yo are, are we a tag team or <laughs> was this just like this one time thing and i think it was kind of it's a little bit almost felt like it was a little bit left in the air and then i think it was almost like we had, we had like a, we had like that chemistry right off the bat. So that's like the interesting thing. Just some of those magical guys, like you know, type of things. Yeah. And just like one of those things where just like. You're both great workers I, too. I like, it's just match made. Yeah, in heaven yeah, and, just, and just this, this chemistry was there it was something so small, but it was mm-hmm. like, um, he was like choking one of the Usos on the ropes. And then when the ref went with Cesaro without saying a word, I just kicked the one in the face. And he was like, man, you just threw like one kick. Most guys will try to throw like two or three and the ref almost catches it. And then it becomes like get in trouble and just dumb. Uh, anyway, we just had a funny chemistry right off the bat. And yeah. it just, it just, I was like, okay, yo, like there's definitely something here. If we, ex- if we ex- expand upon it, it can really who knows what it'll be. And so it was very, it was, it was just so funny that we show up one day and it was in Tulsa, Oklahoma. And we have this tag team gauntlet match on raw. And then two months later, Cesaro and I win the tag titles from the Usos at Fastlane. Yeah. And another thing too, it's you're talking about things going through chefs and comparing the tag division. We debuted to literally all the names you were just saying too. They had gold dust and stardust in there. I believe yeah, man. that was around the time that the Wyatt family was still together too. Yeah, I know he and the they and the Usos had some matches that oh really God, burned yeah. the house down. They had one of my what? favorite matches of the year a couple of years ago on Raw. Just a random like, but they it was a slugfest. It was just I a thought nice you were going to maybe say, uh, um, oh man, uh, Battleground. Oh uh, yeah, that, it was that, in that, Tampa. Oh yeah, That's a- it's uh it's uh there's just so many you you mix them all you can't even yeah. keep track of all of them at the there's just so many uh farm burners. Yeah, I'm um, but uh are there any uh what what were some specific uh finishers? Are there any guys that you really just like working with because it was just like easy? Any moves that you prefer to take? Obviously, all of them aren't yeah, exactly um, ideal. But I mean, it's like just the same list of guys, like uh, you just, I like, it, for example, a guy like Trent Beretta, we always just had really good chemistry. We wrestled a bunch in FCW or a little, like mm-hmm. I was there probably 
uh, a year before him or close to it before he came. And then um, I saw this young, talented kid that, you know, and he was really young. He turned, he turned 21 at WrestleMania 24 in Orlando. Oh, wow. And he'd been, he'd been signed for like a, a month or a couple months before that. So he's 20 years old kid. Um, so we were, we're, you know, we practice a lot together. So then, uh, you know, we just, we just have that, that chemistry just there. Um, but then it's different. Then also, you know, a guy who I've watched for a very long time, like since 1996, Rey Mysterio, and then I'm wrestling him in 2000. Well, I wrestled him on one SmackDown. It's kind of a short yep. match. No, I remember and then, it. I was watching. And then I wrestled him again on Superstars in 2010. And um, that one was the match probably like 12 minutes or something. It was, it was literally uh, the Monday before Mania. And I mean, he gave me everything, man. He gave me everything, that guy. And, and this is a guy that like, uh, I mean, I've watched him a lot and we're, we're friends, but not, not the same level, obviously, as me and Trent or me and Hawkins. This is a guy that like, I've looked up to a lot. And then um, here he is wrestling me and like, give me a hell of a match. And uh, so it, it, yeah, it just becomes like those, once you kind of have that chemistry with those different guys, it just becomes like, uh, it, it, it becomes, then, then things become really cool because then you can like, experiment and try to come up with new things and new ways to do things and we need that chemistry there first you can't just you can't just like blindly do that right it's it it just really is incredible to just kind of meet someone you admire so much and be able to work with them like how often do you kind of think about that and just take pride and kind of appreciate your journey to now and just realize just how far you come and that you accomplish like a, a thing that a lot of people want to, but yeah. just don't and just can't. So it's you're funny. I, I'm not bad at like, or I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm not bad at like living in the moment and not, um, not, not being too worried about looking too far ahead. And so like, like when you're in FCW, uh, it's a little different than it is today. Mm, now, now Hunter's coming down to NXT every week, pretty much. Um, when we were doing the full sale tapings, he'd come at least once a month. When I, when I was in FCW, Hunter came zero times. <laughs> so, and I was there for two years. So my point being is just um it's just a different different animal and at that time it was just like you don't you don't know when you don't know you don't know if you're on anyone's radar you don't know if you're going to get called up tomorrow or let go tomorrow you don't know you just don't know so you just have to so you just have to end up either you're going to become a victim of like trying to think ahead too much and Obviously, it is in your control. You can get better at, at your craft and get better at the things you got to get better at, whether it's, you know, whether it's promos or in-ring or, or, or your body or everything. Um, that's, that's what it's for. And so uh, it just, I just remember, like, I remember instantly when I first came down to Deep South and I remember one of the guys saying, hey, there's cuts after WrestleMania. Hope, hope we don't, right? Are you worried about getting cut? I'm like, bro, I got here like a day ago. Uh, I don't think I moved all the way down from Canada to get fired in a week. I hope, unless I did something really, really wrong. Uh, and uh, so it just, it's funny, like you just see kind of that paranoia, especially at that time. And <clears throat> I, met, I learned real quick, just like, you know what, just enjoy this for what it is because you don't know, you don't know what's gonna happen. And like, for example, I remember Kidman coming back from the road one day on a Wednesday and he told me, Hey, your name got brought up in the meeting. And um, they're thinking of debuting you on ECW next week with uh, Natty as your manager. Well, then in walks Arn, Arn Anderson and Fit Finley come walking in. And now we have to do matches in front of the, in front of two of the main producers. And I wrestled uh, somebody and they right away, 
Arn and Fit both hated the match. The second was over and they had a lot of critique for it and they weren't really that happy with it. And in my mind, I'd blown it. It's over. Uh, yeah. I'm supposed to get held up next week, but now this report's going to say like, don't do it. This guy's terrible. The end. Um, I get a phone call that day anyway from the ECW writer and I come to, I, I get called up the next week anyway. And then I end up, you know, end up having a great relationship with both guys, Fit and Arn, um, both as a talent and as a producer. I learned a lot from both of them. So um, it just is funny. Like you just, your mind just will play games on you and play tricks on you and so it's easy to get kind of like get in your own head especially when you're in developmental and I think um I, I'm, I'm just I'm decent at living in that moment and just taking moments for what they are and not always worrying about what's next what's next what's next was were you able to kind of develop just a peaceful ignorance to the whole thing because you know famously back then the communication lines weren't exactly pristine like i there's a famous story that i think it was paul Heyman was in charge of develop ohio valley at the time i think and they told him to fire cm punk and he said no they said fire him. he said no and so then he just stayed it's like okay well it's like if the company you're working for can't fire you it's like it's like if a person won't fire somebody and it's just so just like so strange because there's so now you mentioned how Hunter's always there and how yep. much they just prioritize really this developmental because isn't even developmental at this point when you got a TV deal and you got Adam mm. Cole and Finn. No, Finn not Bale really. I mean, how, how, how is anyone going to tell me Finn Bale or yeah. this, uh, developmental talent? Exactly. You can't, you can't tell me that, man. This guy's world class. Get out of here. It's, that's the thing I was going to ask too. Is whenever you went to NXT, when they're talking developmental, and it's like you're there, you're like, well, he's already clearly talented. And it's like, oh, Neville's been wrestling probably since he could walk. Like, yeah, yeah, you, yeah. People over in Europe don't play; they train like they yeah. train like crazy, and especially some of the heart. So it's it, how yeah, weird man, is it, it was... seeing just young guys now, like? they're not young guys they've been in the business they've been in the game for a long time so what's kind of that shift in terms of backstage culture kind of been like yeah yeah and it, it, it has been a shift and it's it's very cool and we have a lot of but i think we have like the the strongest amount of like talent that like the company has ever had in its history in terms of like up and down the card kind of like mm -hmm. like you know, Seth's been very, you know, I guess braggadocious about how he feels about the locker room, man. And, and he's, and you know, he, he's, he's right. And I think, I think our locker room is insanely talented and I, and I, you know, guys and girls. And so I think it's just been, you know, when it comes to like the culture has changed and it's changed in a good way and it's changed to, you know, things are, it, it has changed a lot in 10 years. Uh, this company has changed a lot. The locker room has changed a lot. And I think, in my opinion, it's all for the better. Yeah, it's just, I've noticed that it seems it's a lot just more positive. You have people like the New Day, Kofi, uh, Xavier, mm -hmm. Biggie, and then Bailey and uh, Asuka. And you just see the backstage footage, and it's just always these people smiling and having a good time. And you see yeah. like AJ Styles just gaming on a plane. Everyone just seems a lot more just yeah. kind of relaxed. And it's really nice to see because, like, when I was little, I would read, like, historical, like, books about wrestling. And you hear all these people don't get along. And Bruiser Brody was stabbed. And you're, yeah. you have, like, nightmares and stuff. Like, and you hear about all the WCW and WWF politics. So it's really just it's been really nice to see just this shift and it's really fueled, I think, by a lot of the younger guys who just, oh, love, sure. just love the industry and love the people, their, their peers, and just really want to have a great time and just give and people I think good quality stuff. I think that's what it's become more about than anything else is a love for, for this, a love yeah. for wrestling. And, and I think that's what's maybe kind of shifted the most like now like uh 
now everyone's focused on like on I don't know I I, I like I think we're just there seems to be a lot more focus on in ring ability mm-hmm. uh, it, it, within the locker room and within like everybody trying to get better and and I think maybe and obviously I can't speak for times I'm not like for generations right. before I'm not in the locker room but I think now maybe more than ever and maybe it happened you know times in the past too I think more than ever people are willing to help everybody else out everybody's willing to help everybody else out and I think like for example um I had a match I was a producer of a match a few weeks ago um two other talents kind of like were coming up with some ideas with me um one of the girls then used those ideas whatever then text me later that night and was like I'm so sorry you're my producer I should, and I was like what are you talking about I was like we're all on the same team wherever the ideas come from I don't care as long as we all just have a great performance it's all good wherever they come from we're all on the same team I'm not right. I'm not mad that's not I'm, not I'm not wired like that I just hey, if you had a great match that's it and especially in something like a as big of an industry and organization as it now, every employee is really, really is kind of an ambassador yeah. of, of the brand. And, and so, we're all on the same team. So yep. why, why, like, like, again, I'm a big basketball fan, but like, there's like, like, a, you know, like a, a Baca can obviously tell Kawhi Leonard something that might help him that, you know, the coach didn't say. Yeah. And it's nothing wrong. They're they're on. They're literally on the same team. So same same in WWE, man. We're on the same team. It's all good. It's yeah. It's just yeah. Like you said, it's just very very good to see. You know, it's, it's you obviously the industry is something you love, so you want to see the people involved in it also enjoy sure. themselves because uh, it's just better for everyone. I think the more passionate you are and the more joy you can put into it, the better it'll be. Percent. Like some of the best matches or like yep. the Undertaker and Shawn, you think they didn't care about that? Of course they yeah, cared about that. It's Dude, I remember seeing, I was a kid, I'm 15, I remember seeing Shawn Michaels uh, earlier in the day, WrestleMania 12, and um, Diana Hart was asking him if he was like, if he was excited for the match. I remember him saying he was really nervous. And I'd, I'd had my first match like the summer before. Uh, I know I'm a 15 year old kid or whatever. Mm-hmm. And I'm just like, I remember being, I was insanely nervous. And I remember sitting there hearing these words come out of Shawn Michaels mouth in 1996. And I was like, Shawn Michaels is nervous? No way. I thought just I'm nervous. Okay. And then he's like, he said, he said, he did say to her that he was like n- nervous about like entertaining the crowd for that amount of time. And so it was like, it was kind of interesting thing to, to you know, see Shawn Michaels say that to, like I said I'm a 15 year old kid and I kind of take that in and process it and try to understand it and it, you know it was just it was it was cool and then and then to go out and have that match you know so I mean you're right they like these guys did care about their craft obviously a lot it, yeah it's just it's really great to hear stories about that because it's just really just gives you a lot more insight to the person because mm-hmm. you know especially at the time there's all those talks about that Sean was going through a lot of personal issues. But one thing that everyone else also says is that when you looked at him wrestle, you couldn't tell like a lot because he he was just able to perform at such a high ability. And he really, it was might have served as kind of an escape, even though it also hurt you at the same time. But that's just. I've never, I've never had like anything but a, great experience with Sean. Yeah, that's a lot of people have said too. And that even those who had negative experiences when he um, uh, became a born again and yeah. turned himself around, uh, that he was very sure. apologetic yeah. and really healed a lot of, uh, uh, mended, mended a lot of fences, even including with Brett, as we yep. saw later on, which was, was really nice to see because that was kind of a black eye on the industry for a while. Big even time. though it fueled like a, a lot of breaking kayfabe stuff, but I mean, the mm-hmm. mark is funny like, enough. Is it bro, it like, raceable? The way it all went down, it ended up, it ended up bringing out the Mr. McMahon character. Yeah. You know, that whole thing. And it's also the story too. You get supposedly Brett hit him and it's just that whole thing. And 
it's obviously just a legendary aspect of the business, but no especially doubt. being for the title and everything, and it's just a, a huge deal. But it, it just goes to show that the, the face of the business is changing because even they were able to mend fences despite such a breach of trust and uh, like no, that. absolutely, yeah, yeah, I agree. Um, uh, what and just a couple more questions. Uh, no you won a lot of uh, titles in your career. Was there ever a point where it just kind of stopped being fun and you just kind of took it for granted? But or you no, were you no. just always really excited to be able to hold? Gold? No, it's always awesome and it always like it means a lot. It means like means within that company, you know, whatever you know. Obviously, they it varies on importance and sides of the company and things like that but it, it means that the company sees something in you and you know kind of i guess maybe rewarding you and um i mean like it was cool to like i was very 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 cool to win the, the wb tag titles with harry because my very first match at 15 years old is teaming with harry so it's you know 15 years later to win the tag titles on raw is really was really awesome i can't be replaced and then to win it five years later with Cesaro again is is really awesome because it was like one of those things where there's a lot of times where I'm like wow well, doesn't look like, doesn't look like I'll be winning any more titles here but I proved myself wrong it's like with the what the Hardy Boys said uh whenever they were debuting with the not debuting uh, feuding with the Dudleys and Edge and Christian like at the same time the they're supposed to win at mania or at, at and then they didn't and they mm. they it was just like they were so scared that they were just never going to win the titles again just especially when you're so early on like you you yeah. think it's just all about titles and titles and then they talk yeah. about how they kind of grow you mature like within the industry and you're saying for sure you don't have to have the title on you at every single moment for you yeah. to be an important part of the show or the company. Yeah, so, I mean, it's so true. Not one bit. Yeah. Um, so I think Undertaker is the biggest proof of that. Oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah. It's. I believe he's a five-time champion in WWE. Mm, or I think maybe? he's won the heavyweight title. Seven? Even if it's seven, seven three. in 30 years. Yeah. Um. Then he has like the hardcore title, and then he's won the WWE title, I think, twice, and then the tag title. But uh, it's uh, yeah, exactly. But it's just really the most like legendary if, if wrestler. He, if he won seven world titles. They, uh, obviously, I know he won tag titles, stuff like that. He yeah. was world champion seven times. I don't, I don't know if it's that many. I think five, but let's just mm-hmm. say seven. Uh, that means one every four years. So, and that's Undertaker. Exactly. That's one yeah. of the biggest legends of all time. So, I mean, it, it is what it is. Yeah, exactly it's yeah a perfect literally a perfect example um so you you've been re- obviously wrestling for wrestled for a very long time so yeah, what is almost some, exactly 20 years he, oh congrats uh, that's a very big Thank milestone you. uh so what is some things like about the industry or about just yourself that took you a while to kind of understand and learn that you think uh younger talents could really benefit from uh under having understanding of um yeah so it's one of those things where everyone's obviously different and everyone picks different things up at you know at different rates um Mm -hmm. obviously it's not like it's not a secret but it took me a while to figure out promos uh in terms of in terms of like actually not just like for example in stampede wrestling most of the promos would just be like hey you know let's not wait till next show like let's do this match now or whatever and it's like so that's easy and the crowd reacts to it that's easy but stand in the ring with a microphone and speak about something for 60 seconds a little bit different rather than just like a quick post match like hey let's not let's not wait till next time let's do this now so um that took me a while And, you know, everyone's different. I've seen other people who catch that. They're great at speaking from even before day one. And then it takes them a lot. Like, then they maybe, you know, 
something else is they get hung up on something else. And so it's always like, uh, it's very rare that someone's very good at everything. And uh, normally you figure out what it is you're really good at and you kind of steer towards that and you kind of steer away as much as you can from, or, or uh, depending on what it is. Like, if, like, for example, if, if um, like the triple H doesn't go to the top rope, so it's not like it's like oh man he's not a good wrestler he doesn't go to the top rope it's nothing to do with that he just doesn't go to the top rope and right. so that's fine and he doesn't have to um like brock lesnar doesn't have to cut a 20 minute promo for me to understand that brock lesnar is gonna kick my ass i already get it the second i see the guy yeah. i get it i don't need exactly. him to tell me for 10 minutes on a microphone i get it so it's just everyone's a little different and it just what, what are your strengths and what are your, what are your like attributes that are like, what are, what is it? Everyone's different. Like a guy like, um, like it, like, uh, like Enzo, like the yeah. second I saw him, That's second a, I saw him, this guy was cool. cutting amazing promos that. and he was so charismatic and he's so entertaining, this guy, um, you know, way, way, way more than, than I am. And, and, but he got that day one, he's already that he's, you know, and then, but then, you know, it, it just, it, we, we all excel at certain things and then there's certain things that are going to be more of a progress in work, a work in progress. I'm sorry. Right. Um, it's a, and one of the things too, especially with a young town, like people got us so had to remember the rock didn't debut as the rock, Rocky Mavia, oh. and he was getting booed out of buildings. Yep. Stone or Stone Cold Steve Austin famously, uh, what was it? Stunning Steve Austin. Yep. So yep. it's like it. I mean, things take time as well. John Cena uh, was kind of toiling around in mid card until just a chance Halloween yeah. party where they saw Vanilla Ice impression. I think they he's just, talked about it a bunch. Where like yeah. it's, it's been talked about where it's like he's maybe even on the, the chopping block. Yeah. Um. It's just, John Cena. It shows it's just never too late, really, to turn it around. You know, uh -uh, as long as never. you're willing to put in really put in the work, put in the effort, you know, go to yep. the promo classes because fame, not everyone obviously doesn't, but you know, there's been those talks where some stars, they see promo class and it's like, Oh, it's disrespectful that you even think that I need to do work. And they think it's kind of a joke, but you know, you see plenty of guys go in and they do the work and they try to hone their craft and become better yeah. all around yeah. entertainer. More than that to help me so much. Right. So which was Hunter's suggestion. So <laughs> so that's uh you know, it's just all about dedication, which is how you get to wrestle for 20 years as you uh, have absolutely um, absolutely the but I think uh with that I've taken up an awful lot of your time, which I awesome, really no problem, appreciate. Man. Um is there are you taking any bookings for signings or appearances or anything? Yeah. Uh, not at the moment. At the moment, I've just been okay. so busy. Um, and especially with the world still being. Right. All okay. about, you know, we're, well, in, we're in Florida where things seem somewhat normal, but like one of my friends was just in New York and said it was like real weird and so different. I had a friend uh, who just got back from New York as well. And he said it was uh, the city that never sleeps, but it's just sleeping. It's that it's just so, just so odd. Just, Which, like, I don't know if you've ever been in New York, but I've yeah. been a bunch, and like, New York's insane. Yeah. And so to picture it, anything else but like alive at two a.m. is nuts. Uh, yeah, we stayed in Chinatown a lot, so and, like, I, okay, I saw pictures and stuff from from there, and it, like yeah. Madison, just even a uh, Times Square, and it's just. It, it just really just captures kind of the state of the world but i know thankfully yeah, can, like canada too like back home it's still pretty locked down i think it's like maybe maybe gyms just opened up but it's like 10 percent or 20 percent, or maybe they were like they they got open and then almost like then closed back and then open again so like they're in a you know just it, i get it where everyone's just figuring out what is the best way to kind of do this and you know florida has been kind of open for a minute yeah. we were even before we knew what covid was really yeah we're not going to close 
Like, well, you yeah. might want to figure out what it is first, but uh, uh, you know, it's it it is what it is. I yeah. but um, but yeah, I mean, especially with the because people countries still figuring out that COVID rollout yeah, and, and the, doing and all the vaccination testing. And, in this time of year, it's just it's WrestleMania season. Mm-hmm. So as of right now, I'm just doing I'm just doing my in-house WWE stuff. Okay, sounds sounds great. Yes. Not a bad gig at all. No, there, oh my god, I cannot complain <laughs> at all. Is there any uh, place that people can find you or follow you? I mean, or? yeah, on, on Twitter at TJ Wilson and at Instagram at TJ Wilson Seven Eleven, which is my birthday, and it's you know very famous convenience store. So yeah. double whammy. Not a bad deal. Uh, yes, sir. Well, thank you so much again. I really appreciate mm. it. This is my pleasure. Extremely my helpful. Pleasure um i'll uh i'll probably post it later i'm really busy with school and no problem. right now what are you taking uh, in school i am a political science major uh-huh. um but you know halfway through that i realized if i pursue this and i'm going to be miserable for the rest of my life so i added a minor in mass communications because i'd taken all the major political science classes already uh-huh. So for like, and if I changed it, I probably would have to go back to school for a couple more years. So I'm doing a minor in mass comm when that's why I'm taking beginning reporting and um, uh, like intro introduction to advertising and writing in mass media and things like that. So I'm a sports, uh, not sports, social media coordinator for a couple of local businesses. Oh, and that's I'm, cool. Also, yeah, and I'm also looking to start a blog, which I just talk about variety subjects because, like, like you, I love sports and I'm a big fan of re- pro wrestling as well, and I'm a big fan oh, yeah. of anime and manga and things. So just kind of be like a general. Just I understand. A, yeah, it's cool. That's a really cool yeah, exactly because then it's just more like uh, open. Yeah, it's just a little bit of a hub and just kind of a place where I can make sure that, that my writing ability doesn't deteriorate after school yes, as well. Sir. Yeah. Yeah. Cause That'll, you never, never know when only if you don't use it, you lose it. Exactly. And it's so mindset. definitely not the worst thing to do, but yeah, I'm very uh, lucky to have this opportunity. And, you know, when you say you're in a beginning reporting class at USF, it, it helps get a couple of more interviews as well. People are a little bit nicer, but yeah. Yeah. It, it was, I've heard though, I've been obviously tweeting at a few people trying to get feedback and everyone had been particularly nice and I was really appreciative, but I got the, finally had one negative reply and someone said, dude, this isn't the way to do it. Like it's a social media site. Yeah. It's like, oh, it, it's, that's what it's for. It's like, let me, oh, all let these me interviews just... that I've done during this like pandemic have all come from someone <laughs> yeah. messaging me. And asked me if I want to do it. And I just am like, you know what? I, I can appreciate that. Like you took, I mean, you specifically, but also others too, like took the chance. And I was like, you know what? I, at least the I, I can just give my hour of my time. It's not a big deal. Yeah. Uh, again, I really appreciate it. Uh, also, um, do you have any feedback in terms of uh, the, not even just the interview style, but of like how I'm uh, talking or messaging or anything? Because Obviously, you don't want to come off as overbearing because I know you're all incredibly busy. So I was just wondering if there's any really feedback or anything at all, or if you. I mean, I don't. Any... I don't really have any. Uh, okay. Like you were no, you overbearing. You were not one bit overbearing with me. So easy. Okay. I appreciate that. To the point yeah. that I like almost forgot about this today earlier, <laughs> and then I was like, I clicked on Twitter, went to, and I was like, oh yeah, got that. And so I like set an alarm just not- to be a, like just to be on the safe side, but. No, man, you're like, not at all. I'm not, you haven't okay. been like har- harassing me or like a bother whatsoever. All right. I really appreciate nope. that. Easy. Uh, very phenomenal. professional. Very, very happy to hear. I'll awesome. make sure to put you as a recommendation Reference. on a resume <laughs> or something <laughs> yes, like that. Pr- appreciate yeah. that. But uh, hope that you have a good rest of your day. You and your loved Thank ones you are too. doing well. And that maybe somewhere down the line you can talk again. But, yep, man. Sounds good to me. Hell yeah, we will. All right. Really appreciate it. Have a great day. Okay, Thank you. Thank you, too. Bye. Bye-bye.